Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below for NAR or any other game. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we are sending our Vikings. First we're recruiting them and then we're going to send them out onto the ships to different destinations. Today we're taking a look at NAR. This is brought to us in North America by Pandasaurus Games. It's a, it's a sort of an engine building game. Splendor-ish. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In NAR, you're going to have your own ship, and you're going to be starting with some Vikings. You're going to be adding to them running engines. You're also going to be going off exploring different uh, destinations and having another set of engine building that's going to be going on throughout the game. Now, you're trying to get points over the course of the game, and once someone gets 40, whoever has the most at the end of that round will win. There's also ways, because at the beginning of your turn, you're going to be going up uh, this, this reputation track over the course of the game. And at the beginning of your turn, like in this case, you'd get two points. And that's going to happen at the beginning of every turn, so this is sort of like an income uh, of points that you can get if you work on this track over the course of the game. So the first thing you do on your turn is you get income uh, or points if you're up on the reputation, then you've got a couple of choices. Now you're only taking one action on your turn and one of them can be to recruit a Viking. Now you have Vikings like this in your hand, you have three of them, and you can basically play one in front of you and you line them up to color. So this is a red, if I had a new color I would just start it here. Then you get everything on that card and everything above it. So this is gonna get me a point because that's the, the symbol for points and this is going to get me a bracelet. Now the bracelets are cool because now I have two of them. And how this works is, I showed you that over the course of the game, you're gonna be going to destinations and building up an engine. Let's say I've already gone here. Now, if you spend one bracelet, you get everything in the left column. Two bracelets, everything in the first and second column. If you have three bracelets and you spend all three, you get to, to do everything in all of these columns, which is cool. At the beginning of the game, you don't have this. So I could just spend a bracelet to get a point. Or I could have spent all three to get a point and a bracelet, but I don't have three, I have two. Now, you can do this before or after your action. So if I wanted to, I could spend this bracelet, come down here, activate everything in this column, put you give me another point. So I just made two points my first turn. Now keep in mind, I played a red Viking, and also keep in mind, I have one of these recruit tokens. You can have up to three. And recruit tokens are gotten in many of the same ways. Like if I had played this one, I would have gotten a recruit token and a bracelet instead of the point and the bracelet. But I played a red Viking, so by default, this is the card I need to take into my hand which means I can play this one later, which isn't bad because I already have a blue Viking, I can start working that engine. But it's very interesting that you're playing a card to try to get a card that's under that. So sometimes you're playing it to really get the card you want. However, I mentioned these recruit tokens, one of the ways to use these is to spend it to then you could take any one of these Vikings, not the one that's under the color that you just played. This little twist is simple, but it's really interesting. Now on your turn, instead of uh, recruiting a Viking, you can uh, explore a destination. And what do you know? This one needed two red Vikings. Now remember, this one was sort of an engine. If I had added a third red here, I would have gotten a bracelet, a point, and whatever that other thing has. So you can keep milking an engine to be more efficient that way, but eventually you're going to need to figure out the right time to take these cards and have, you go to discard pile. I need to spend two of these here. Now it's going to get me a bracelet, but... Again, now I have this. So now if I had two, bra two bracelets to spend, I could get one, two, three points. I'm starting to build that engine of points there uh, with that, uh, you know, my destination cards. Now another way to use these is if I had one of these, I could, have, I could have sent one of the red Vikings and spent this to be another one. Now you always have to give one card, but that gives you another flexibility of spending or you know, sending Vikings off. Now there are two rows of this. This is row A and row B. These ones are easier to get, the costs are less, but like in this one, this is reputation. That's again how you move up the reputation track on the board. Which again, if you get up to any of these other numbers, uh, you'll be getting a certain amount of points once you get there at the beginning of every turn, which can be very powerful. But once you're able to afford these ones, like three yellows and two greens, or four of the same, you get points. Look, it's five points, five points, nine points. So these ones sort of help you with goods and maybe some engine building of points every time you trigger them. But these ones give you the big points when you get to get them. That's pretty much the whole game. Pick one of those two actions, keep doing it until someone gets 40 or more. The one that has the most at the end is the winner. And lastly, there's these artifact cards. There's a, you know, a handful of them. And you can play with one of these. It just gives you one other thing to do during the game. Like for example, this one, uh, if you explore, you can basically take any one of the Vikings that's there available and discard it and replace it. So kind of stopping someone else from getting them. Here's if you have you know, one of each Viking in front of you, you get these goods. So this, you know, a little twist and a little more layer of depth there. Yeah, the thing I like about this first is it is definitely a Splendor-ish streamlined engine builder. Uh, this game had to have been inspired by Splendor because it is 
Uh, very streamlined. There is like zero fat in this game. I love that. It's like you're either going to play a Viking or you're going to use them and spend them to go to a destination. That's it. Like it's really easy mechanically. Uh, definitely a quality production. The card quality, the art, the, even some tuck boxes that come in there to hold the cards, things like that. Good production for Panasaurus. They usually do great things like this. I like that the Vikings themselves, as you play them, it's called the recruit action, they trigger the engine that's there. Uh, and you get, you know, you've got a new Viking gained. And so you can sort of milk this engine. You're like, oh, I played a red one, and then a red one, and I get this and this. I play a red one, and I get this, this, and this. I play a fourth one, I get this, 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 and this. And you're building that engine up, and I like that. It's just very fun to do that. But at some point, you got to figure out when to send the Vikings to explore uh, and, and reduce your engine. So it's like you're building it up. It's almost like in deck builders where you're like, hey, I'm going to build and, and build up all this money, but then at some point I need to turn my deck into making points. Same thing here. You're like, you're running this engine, you're running this engine, you love getting everything this engine is producing you, but it might not be producing you big points from the destination. So it's like at some point you have to sort of cut off your hand there that's, you know, giving you all this stuff and send them out to, to, to do it. And I think that's really interesting. It's, it's a tough decision to know when to cut over and say, Okay, I'm done milking this engine. I'm going to have to now set these, send these things out, right? It's, it's a really interesting sort of timing, if you will. Uh, I like that there's two sets of destinations. Uh, you know, the, the easier A ones are easier to get. They give you sort of goods and maybe sometimes some points in the, in the engine building aspect. But then the, the B ones are really hard, much harder to get, but they're going to give you five points, nine points, you know, six points, things like that. So, again, almost splendorish where you, as you go up to the harder ones, the harder to get, but they give you more points and things like that. Uh, I like that the destinations themselves build a secondary engine to run. So you get this destination, you put it onto your ship, maybe you have other destinations, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna spend, spend some bracelets and run this engine. And that's another interesting aspect is, when do you spend your bracelets? How many do you spend? Do you spend one to get the left column of everything? Do you spend two to get the two, that you know, the, the middle and the left column, or do you spend three to get all three? Which cards are you getting? Are you trying to build it so that you can spend less bracelets and then you can just get the, the one column on a bunch of stuff? Interesting as to which ones you pick. The reputation itself opens up multiple paths to victory where you can try to get basically an income of points at the beginning of every turn. Uh, the artifacts, those, you know, those advanced uh, rules there, they add another layer of decision making. Um, I like that uh, the recruits themselves, and I talked about the bracelets, the recruits, those little uh, tokens with the, with the mask on there, I like that that is flexible. You can use it in one of two ways. You can use it to take any Viking after playing one because that part is super clever. You play a Viking down, you must take a card that is that is underneath that color on the board. That's really clever. It's such an easy thing, but it really makes a very interesting decision space. But you can spend a recruit and take any Viking. That's great. Take one that you really want, take one that you think somebody else really needs, or you can use them to make exploring a little easier. So you, I talked about cutting your hand off and sending all your Vikings out to you know reduce your engine to, in order to get to that destination. Well, if you have a bunch of you know, recruit tokens, you can spend those and maybe you'll have to spend one of those engine building cards out. And now you still sort of have an engine. So again, it's resource management as well, which is really cool. Um, the game's really good. If you're looking for like, a, you know, 20 to 30 minute quick, easy engine builder that's streamlined, this is really good. I don't really have a lot negative to stay here. Um, but if I'm, if I'm looking for things, I wish, one thing I loved in Splendor is that the interaction was very heavy because you could reserve a card. Here, yes, you can you can spend a recruit and take a Viking card that someone else might want, but that's not as bad as like taking a destination card they want, which is the equivalent of taking one of the cards in Splendor. I wish there was a way that you could maybe sp spend a recruit and a bracelet and reserve a destination card uh, and just make it just make it have a little bit more teeth. There is interaction there of getting the things first, like the destination cards, and you know getting Viking for other players, but I wish it would have had maybe a little bit more teeth with the interaction there. That's just my personal preference that I like games to be like that. The Viking art is great in the game, but if you have the same card, it has the same art. I mean, if you have a yellow card that gets a bracelet, there's multiples of those. Both of those have the same Viking on there. I realize that from a cost perspective, it wouldn't be economically feasible to get all this custom art and have every card of unique art. It's just not economically feasible for a small box game like this. So I get why they did it, but if I'm wishing here, I'd like to see even more of this great art. Uh, the last thing is, you know, I have not played this. I've played it a handful of times. I haven't played it anywhere near how many times it was playtested. Getting reputation early might, 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 a big might, might be overpowered here. Where, like, again, I haven't seen all, all the permutations of this play out, but it seems like getting early reputation can really help you. Maybe you can just 
disregard reputation if someone else is going heavy and you can still win. I haven't quite seen that yet. It seems like you have to get some reputation. But again, I, I've only played a handful of times, so I'm just trying to say things that, that, that might be issues, but not really. Maybe the reputation might be overpowered. But again, overall, this is a fantastic game. Uh, if you're looking for that quick engine builder that feels Splendor-ish, but maybe it's a little nicer uh, with a, with a you know, really cool Viking theme, you got to check out NAR. It's been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships with board games, and helping you on the next one you love. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and if you missed their 4.0 Kickstarter, you can still late pledge and take advantage of over 40 unlocked stretch goals and early fulfillment. This campaign featured a new young Sherlock table, perfect for children's gaming and movable coffee table, 10 new thematic mats by top artists like Vincent Dutre, a new designer art series Mycroft Topper with thematic art from Brent Woodside, and some of the best package deals they've had including game mat bundles. Go to Game Toppers LLC or click the link below to late pledge now.